Good morning zookeepers and welcome back to Planet Zoo. Today I'm going to be making an enclosure for the hippopotamus and I'm going to be using this glitch that I've learned and I, I really like it. It's a really cool glitch and it's out for making underwater tunnels. Now this is something I'm probably going to do a lot more especially for the likes of these semi-aquatic creatures because honestly I absolutely love it and also I, I don't know why it's not even an actual feature in the game and you have to sort of glitch it like this. So you can see I'm burying a, a little bit of the path and then putting in the water and that's how you do it. You need to bury that bit of path otherwise the glitch isn't going to work and it won't allow you to play wa place water and you also need tunnelling on for it to work. Once you've done that you can then reconnect your path and do a tunnel all the way through the water source as you can see when you lower down the water disappears but when you get a little bit higher the water reappears now this is um, quite deep so if you want it sort of level uh, you have to do a lot of messing around I, I didn't want to do a lot of messing around and with them being big hippos you're going to mainly be looking up and uh, it, it makes it look more daunting being right next to a hippo especially if it's already even taller than you are even though you're in this protected glass I can imagine it being quite daunting and I'm really looking forward to it now my idea and design behind it as you can see I could have smoothed it all the way out and had the tunnel more uh, real like I could have made this pool more realistic looking but my idea behind it uh, one it, it means less faffing around and two I absolutely love the look of natural swimming pools so that's the kind of look I'm actually going to go for and then in the shallower parts of the water I'm going to be adding like loads of plants so it looks like it's just naturally filtered by the plants which is just quite an enjoyable look for me and it looks kind of cool and funky from above like I love aerial drone shots of these um, like nature pools and they look really cool. Anyways to the hippopotamus house I'm going to keep it somewhat simple but kind of decorative a lot of time I do make it so the building isn't all that decorative but I kind of want it to have like a modern sort of they've tried keeping natural sort of theme um I do kind of run out of time for when I was making this so I kept the inside near enough simple I did all the protective bars and things like this and made two areas where they can sleep in uh, mainly because like I said I ran out of time but I will probably come back to it and add a lot more to the backstage area. That'll be sometime in the future. As you can see, I, I layer it out a little bit so it's got layers to it. So it's not just one complete flat wall. It has that sort of like artistic look, which I was kind of going for. I didn't want this building to be too plain and simple. And uh, I did mess around with the doorway a fair bit, not realizing how small I'd actually made the doorway when I eventually go around to adding a door. If you, I can't remember if you see this later. I have chopped this up a fair bit. I spent a, longer than usual uh, making this because uh, by now I've probably edited and recorded two videos yeah not today I've literally just made this one video today because uh, <laughs> of the uh, amount of time I actually spent on it and uh, I did run out of time I had other duties to go and attend to so yeah um, I kept the inside near enough bare bones ish uh, there's a lot more I want to do to it anyways but yeah, like I was saying, I sort of made it like the outside of the building way more interesting than uh, usual uh, instead of keeping it flat because I did want to make it stand out. I, like I said, I put a lot of, a fair bit of time into this enclosure. I feel like I will do a lot more to it to make it a bit more, or well, not even a bit more, a, a way more interesting uh, And when I go back to looking at it. I was planning on going to put this in workshop, but with how complicated the whole procedure is of making this one enclosure and the way I did it I just don't think it's going to translate too well from workshop to park when you guys are adding it if there's certain aspects of this that you kind of want in the workshop let me know in the comments and I will go around and add it into there so then you can use those particular items within your build so for example like the hippopotamus house I'm making right now and like I said it's 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 simple but it, it's not quite um, yeah, <laughs> not quite bare bones. So you see, I'm just making this uh, sort of iron fence that's thick, protective, keeps the keepers safe, even though we know in this game the keepers go and waltz into the enclosure with them. And as well, something I, I never even thought of doing, I don't know why. Like when you go into a lot of buildings, it, the walls are plastered, aren't they? It's not just 
brick on show. And a lot of times I do just, I'm guilty of leaving the bricks on show. So I thought I'd actually plaster the inside of the walls, just to add a bit of realism. And this is when I get my handy little archer out and then realise, oh yeah, I've made this door way too short. Like that archer is probably one of the most useful things I've ever learned. I think it was Adam Up Gaming that I learned that from. And uh, it just lets you know the height of people, like it's the exact height of people. So you know uh, where your doorways need to be, where your barriers, how tall they need to be, uh, where your viewing points are, so guests can actually see. I remember one of the first free form enclosures I properly did, I made the viewing bit chest height, wasn't even head height. So now that I know that Archer is a thing, it's one of the most useful things I've ever used in this game. But yeah, I, I try and like try and mix like kind of like African sort of vibes into this enclosure, especially with that orange wall. It kind of reminds me of the orange wall you can already have. Obviously, that are the plaster bits, but I thought it adds for like an interesting. Let's light in. If there's guests by that bit, they can sort of see through there. But it's not like a hundred percent a viewing area, so it gives slight privacy to the hippos that are in the enclosure, and that's the kind of vibe I was going for. With the buildings, I kept them like nice and simple. The entrance because there's a lot to decorate going down into there and I already didn't have enough time to do half the stuff I was doing anyways so I kept it simple and it's like literally what you'll see it towards the end anyways I'll rather than explain it to you but the path area I wanted to look kind of nice originally I was going to do rock on both sides but then I thought no we'll keep it sort of modern we'll use this concrete wall uh, and then it's just like that's holding the dirt on that side but in the enclosure we're having this rock or it more than likely would be fake decorative rock that's been painted uh, in reality because uh, real rocks expensive and very heavy to move so yeah well, let's just say like the outside was concrete the inside of it was actual natural rock and uh, yeah I just really enjoyed that kind of aesthetic it's sort of like modern and nature mixing together again and as you see right now I'm just doing the buildings and I keep it really nice and simple because obviously doing that tunnel is going to be a lot of work going all the way down to the path and trying to make everything look smooth as well the tunneling being slightly a bit a bit chaotic sometimes and um, like I said I didn't have too much time otherwise this would have been like a two day project for me also not a whole 48 hours but between two different days um, but I, I really wanted to get it done and it, like I said the beauty of this thing you can always come back to them and upgrade them it doesn't have to be bish bash bosh you've done the enclosure it's always nice to go back to them and add your final upgrades or if I've learnt something new I can always go back to it and add those things to it etc etc so it kept it nice and simple uh, like luckily if you've not played this game um, and you don't know guests will walk through walls if the path goes through the wall so it's kind of handy you can just put a door there and it looks a bit like the guests in Jurassic World when they just sort of phase into the building through the door that's closed and that's basically what it is if you've played that game if you've got a little bit of reference so yeah it's cool it works out it looks nice and uh, yeah I was quite happy with it very simple easy design um, I made little rails around there just for like protection so the guests don't fall into the enclosure uh, and that's like a really again that modern sort of look and what I was doing here with the grass in the water now I was watching a documentary not too long ago and the hippos um, obviously this ain't really that tall a plant but the hippos when they are swimming and walking on the bottom of the floor they actually make these paths through the plants so it looks like highways through it so that's the kind of feel I was going for uh, with the grass I made it in clumps in certain areas with what looks like a trail going all the way through it and yeah I really like that so I was like yeah I'm going to do that I uh, added a fair few willows in the corner, I love the willows, they're a really nice looking plant and as well the hippos like it and you do find them near water so I placed a few of those and then like I said I was placing plants within the shallow parts of the water so it looks like it's that sort of natural kind of uh, water filter and then around the outside I add this long grass because I can't imagine the hippos pressing themselves completely against the wall and completely treading down and I can't see zookeepers going in there mowing that lawn all the time so I had it on the outside where it looks like the grass is not really trampled or cut so it's slightly overgrown and that's like a really cool like sort of look to it especially against the wall and uh, I quite enjoyed it and then we add a fair few trees and then go around just patterning the floor so it looks like it's been trodden on also I can imagine these hippos uh, doing a lot of damage to grass and bringing up the mud so it's not going to be completely green all the way around 
and then add some TVs. Originally, I was going to have them up high like this, and I was like, I can imagine it being uncomfortable constantly looking up. Obviously, you're already looking up for the hippos, but then if you're trying to read and uh, to try and break it up a wee bit, I actually bring the TVs down because already it's a pretty tall wall as it is, and it also doesn't obstruct too much view of the water, especially if they come right up to the glass. So that's the kind of feeling I was going for. Um, and again, I just added uh, the walls and the doors into the tunnel, so then it looks like, you know, I didn't have to, it didn't look messy, it looked neat, it looked neat, it's where I was going for. Then I had loads of different enrichments all the way around the enclosure. Something I learned of, I think it was Zoo Adventure, I think it was. Um, they, if you put path underneath the floor, the when you place down items, it's not going to bring the dirt up and ruin that look of the smooth floor. So yeah, that's, that was a neat trick, and then just delete the taps afterwards. And yeah, just this is what I mean. It looks like it literally looks like a drone shot off those natural swimming pools you can get. And it's such a cool like item in the enclosure, the that underwater tunnel. And that is like I said, I'm just why I was surprised it wasn't already a, a thing in the game. Now, unfortunately, I don't have that many shots from afterwards because what happened was I realized um I didn't well I didn't realise till it was too late that when you got the pool like I thought because they were already able to swim they'd just be able to swim out there but apparently I needed to smooth the ground more on the edges where I'd put the rocks so I went to work doing that and then obviously I had to remove the water to do that but obviously with the glitch once you try and put the water back in it won't happen uh, it won't let you say it's obstructed because it then recognises the path being there. So I'm going to have to delete all that and then redo the water bit for it to work. But nevertheless, I got this shot of it being completed, uh, which I'm really happy about. Uh, it would have been a bit awkward if I didn't get any of the shots, but... Oh well, it's it's sink for another day. I will end up fixing it and then they'll be able to swim out into the open once I've done all that. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed today's build and I hope it's given you some inspiration, especially if you didn't know about the underwater glitch like I did. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.